I've got 10 stylish projects you can make as gifts with basic woodworking tools. We're gonna start off with the easiest and work our way up in complexity, but still keeping everything simple enough for a beginner. We're starting off with a very basic ballet tray, a place to throw your keys as you come in through the door. I got my template printed out, so I got some spray adhesive. I'm gonna mount it right onto some plywood. We're gonna use a jigsaw to cut out the inside of the template, but I need to drill a hole first so we can get our blade in there. One of my favorite tricks with the jigsaw is to lay some foam insulation on top of your bench and use that as the sacrificial bottom. And I'm cutting as close to the line as I can without touching it so I can sand down to the line. I'm cutting a piece of acrylic to extend my router base. You could also use plywood for this, but I like acrylic so I can see through it and you can cut it on the table saw and then I'm drilling a hole through the middle to allow the bit to pop through it. And I'm just gonna use some double-sided tape to attach it right to the existing base. I've got a bowl bit in my router with a bearing on the router side and that bearing is going to ride right along our template. So I'm gonna find a good spot where I like the grain and then I'm just gonna double side tape my template right down to the wood. And we're gonna do this in multiple passes. All right, so that was the first pass. And that's looking really good. I just wanna go a little bit deeper. I'm gonna lower my bit or raise the bit depending on which direction you're looking at it. And there we go. Now we can cut out the outside shape. I printed out another template that I'm gonna use some spray adhesive and attach it to my wood so I can get my outside line. And then we can cut this out either with a jigsaw or a bandsaw. I always like to cut as close to the line as I can without touching it and then sanding down to the lines. So now we're gonna add a little decorative round over to the bottom, do some finish sanding and move on to the next project. Up next, we're making a decorative bandsaw box to sit on a table or a desk. It can be difficult to find wood thick enough, so I'm cutting a bunch of pieces so I can laminate them together. As we're gluing up our blank, we wanna make sure that we are cutting within the capacity of our bandsaw. And then let that sit and dry for an hour or so. Now that the blank is dry, I'm gonna take our paper template and attach it right to the box. I like to take the bottom of the template and align it with the bottom of the box. It just means less cutting. Cut just outside the line, nice and slow. Let the blade do all the work. Don't sand anything down. We're gonna save all the sanding for later. So now we're just going to cut the back off. Now with the back off, I'm gonna cut out what's going to be the drawer. I'm gonna go with the grain and I'm gonna enter from the side, come all the way around and then stop when I meet that entry cut. With this cut, you wanna go right down the middle of the line and try to stay on the line as fast as possible. So you wanna go nice and slow, let the blade do all the work.
so for the drawer, I cut off the front and I'll cut off the back and then I'll scoop out the middle. So now that I got the front and back removed, I'm just gonna sketch out what I wanna remove for the drawer. Make those a little bit wider so it's a little bit easier to cut. So now I wanna get some glue in that gap, close that gap, and then glue on the back piece. Now we'll just glue up our drawer. Try to line everything up as best you can. Now that everything is dry, we're gonna sand down to the line and then we're gonna sand the outside of the drawer. You don't wanna sand the outside of the drawer too much because the more you sand, the looser that fit will be. Now that we got that sanded all to shape, we're gonna round over all of the edges. This is much easier at the router table, but I wanna try it by hand. And look at that. All right, so I'm gonna do some final sanding. We're gonna flock the inside of the shell and the inside of the drawer using this red adhesive and then these red flocking fibers. I like to flock the inside of the bandsaw box that tightens up the fit. Plus, that means a lot less sanding to do. So we're gonna take this outside because these red flocking fibers, they're so fine. I don't want this floating around in the shop. And then we're gonna load it up into the flocking gun and then force it in there. Picture frames make a very thoughtful gift because it can showcase a moment in time or highlight a relationship. We'll start by cutting the frame to width and before we cut it to length, we'll cut the rabbit that'll hold the picture and the backing. All right, so we got our maple cut up for this picture frame. You could do this groove with a router. I always prefer to do it with a table saw. This picture frame is for square photos, so all four sides are gonna be the exact same length. I got my miter gauge set to 45 degrees. I got a little stop here clamped to my fence, and I would just use that to make sure all my pieces are the exact same length. Since this picture frame is so small, these pieces are so small, I'm not gonna do anything to reinforce the corners, but I am gonna put glue on the ends, let that dry, and then re-glue. This will fill up the end grain and will just create a stronger joint because that end grain likes to soak up all that glue. Now that that has had time to dry, we're gonna actually glue these together. And for something this small, I'm just gonna use some tape. I find that this green tape is stretchier than the blue tape. And works as a nice clamp. And make sure on the front side, you got some nice tight seams. And just let that dry for an hour or so. I went ahead and cut the stand for the bottom of this picture frame. I got my blade set to 75 degrees. So after I push this through, I'm also gonna cut the same angle on the bottom of the picture frame. I'm just gonna eyeball this up here so it cuts off just enough to put that angle on there. So now I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on here and clamp these guys together. I 
I've got more projects that you can make coming your way, but first a special message from Wally, Duke and I from today's sponsor, Sunday's Food for Dogs. It's actually Duke's birthday today. Make sure to wish Duke a happy birthday down in the comments. We don't know how old he is, he's adopted. You four or five? Unlike regular kibble or those messy frozen foods, Sundays offers something totally different. It's 100% human grade made from real whole foods. We're talking about the kind of ingredients you can actually pronounce. Just look at this list of ingredients. These are foods that I would actually eat. The best part, it's no fuss at all. There's no prep or mess. It's just healthy and super easy to serve. It's air dried and not frozen or cooked to preserve all those nutrients and flavors. We have two wiener dogs, Duke and Wally, and both of them have health concerns. Duke has thyroid issues and Wally has allergies and a sensitive stomach. So what we feed them is extremely important to us. And even if they didn't have health concerns, what you feed your family should matter. I've got a special deal for everybody looking to give their dogs the best. Get 50% off your first order of Sundays. Just go to sundaysfordogs.com slash make something. Trust me, your dogs are going to love it. Plus, they have free samples. All you have to do is cover shipping and handling to give it a try. That link is down below. Click on it and get 50% off. We got to get back to work, guys. We got work to do. Yeah. Even on your birthday, we got work to do. I'm going to live forever. I'm going to learn how to fly, fly. Who doesn't sing to their dogs? <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Analog clocks are beautiful and timeless. We're gonna do something a little bit different and make one that sits on a desk or a table. We went ahead and cut the four pieces for this clock. It's going to have mitered corners. I went ahead and cut those mitered corners over at the router table. I like using a chamfer bit at the router table because it's a little bit more accurate than the table saw. So now we're gonna cut a groove into all these pieces to accept a piece of 1 8 inch plywood. I got my blade set to cut about halfway up into the wood and I'm going to move my fence over so it's about a half inch from the edge. Lock that down, and then we might have to make multiple passes to accept the plywood. So that is not thick enough to accept my plywood, so I'm just gonna nudge my fence over just a touch. That fits into there, so now we just need to cut our plywood to size. I printed out my clock face here. And I'm just gonna rough cut this out. So I got that cut out and I'm gonna set my board on top here and I'm gonna center that on there. And I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife and cut it to the exact size. And I'm just gonna use some spray adhesive. I'm just gonna add the glue to the miters. I'm not gonna add glue to the groove that we cut because I don't want any glue seep out to get on our clock face. You can just use tape to hold that together while that dries. We're going to mix up some epoxy and just pour it right on top. That paper is gonna get wet and some of the wood is gonna show through. I'm gonna be okay with that. And then we'll get rid of some of those bubbles. So now that the clock is dry, I'm gonna try to drill a hole right here in the center. Whoop. The clock hands that I have for this are just a little bit too big, so I'm gonna nip them down. So, and stick that through there. We're just gonna hand tighten that down. If you wanna make this a wall hanging clock, you could glue on a little piece of wood on there so you could mount that to the wall. I kinda like it as like a little desktop clock and I ain't gonna put it back on it. I'm sure some of you are gonna have major opinions about that.
Up next, we're gonna make a tabletop lamp. This project is where you can add your own touch by how you choose to make the shade. To start this off, we're setting our blade to 60 degrees and cutting three slats to width and length. Now that we got the three pieces cut to width and length, I set my blade back to 60 degrees and we're gonna cut two slots in each piece. That's gonna hold our glass or the lampshade, whatever you decide to use. If you're gonna use glass for your inserts, now's a good time to cut that glass. I've done that in the past. This time I'm gonna do something a little bit different and I'm gonna use wood veneers. But I need something temporarily cut to width so I can put this together and draw my base. So I've got some 1 8 inch plywood that I'm gonna to cut to width here and then that's just gonna be a spacer so I could cut the bottom. If you have a thin curved blade in your table saw, you might have to run that through a couple times to get that width wide enough to hold 1 8 inch glass. So I'm gonna temporarily put this together. Now we can use this to draw our bottom. I don't have a piece wide enough for the bottom, so I'm gonna glue two pieces together to make it wide enough. So now that the base is dry, I can set this on here and I can draw the outline of this. I can add a quarter of an inch, create a little lip, and then we'll go cut this out on the bandsaw. We're gonna use some dowel joinery to connect the base to the top. So I'm gonna drill some holes in here. Now I need to drill a hole for the lamp. So I'm just gonna find the center here. So that is going to go through just like that. So I got a rubber band on here to hold this together temporarily. And then I'm gonna flip this upside down I'm gonna use my fingers to find center here, and then I can get the hole started from underneath. And then I can drill down about an inch or so. I went ahead and put a chamfer on both sides of the bottom. So now we're gonna glue this guy up. These are compressed to 3 8 of an inch and they expand when they get wet. So they go in the hole quite easy, but that glue is gonna cause them to expand a little bit. I have some of this yellow dyed veneer. That will drop right into there. I can mark my line here. All right, so we're gonna put a little bit of hot glue in there. We're gonna push this up in there as far as it will go. Then we're just gonna put some feet on the bottom here to elevate it off the ground to give it room for this cord. How freaking cool is that? That is stunning. I think this is butternut, but I'm not 100% positive. Make sure you're using a bulb that doesn't get hot, like a traditional bulb in there. Probably gonna get a little too hot for that veneer. Possibly burn, burn your house down. I don't want you burning your house down. That's why the first time we made this, we made it out of glass. Plants always make for a great gift, so why not personalize them with a modern looking stand? This project looks fancy with all the angles, but goes together very quickly with how we'll cut and glue everything up. I've 
I've got my nine pieces cut for this planter. So now I'm just gonna add some decorative angles here. I'm just following along with the plans and we're gonna cut this out at the bandsaw. So now this is going to get glued up like this. The CA glue kind of works as clamps and the wood glue is for strength. Because we got that CA glue in there, that only needs to be clamped up for about a minute or so. Now that that is dry, we can add the four legs. Again, with some CA glue and some wood glue. If I spray a little bit of activator on the other piece, the CA glue will cure instantly. There are plans and templates for all of these projects, link below in the description. If you're looking for more ideas, I've got 10 more projects you can make before Christmas. I'll have a link to that at the end of the video. I've also written three books containing nothing but craft projects. I've got you covered if you're looking for the perfect handmade holiday. I just started my biggest project ever. We bought a house that we cannot use until I make every single piece of furniture in it. We're talking bedroom furniture, chairs, cabinets, cutting boards, art, shelves. If it can be made of wood, I'm going to make it. And you'll have a chance to stay at this house, judge my work firsthand, and even have a chance to work with me in my shop. This is all starting in late 2024. Whew. Biggest thing I've ever taken on. We've ever taken on. Kelly is the co-designer in all of this, so she has final say in everything. She's she's more like she's more like the the main designer, and I'm like the assistant designer. It's it's been it's been fun so far. We we have we have the exact same taste when it comes to design. There's nothing. It's 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 super insanely rare that one of us likes something and the other one doesn't. So we 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 like the same stuff. So that's good. The package that'll contain the work in the shop with me experience will be limited to just once a month. I'm only one person. I can only do so much. So Patreon members will get to jump to the front of the line. And the longer you've been a Patreon member, the further up that wait list you go. So. If you've been a Patreon member for five years, you'll probably have first dibs at staying at our new house and working with me in my shop. I feel like I'm already friends with my Patreon members, so it'll make it a bit more of a comfortable experience for me. If you've ever met me in person, you know that I can be awkward and a shy dude sometimes. Awkward silence. <laughs> so this is, this is my way of reducing the mental demand of this crazy thing that we're about to do. I'm still working out all the details on what projects we'll do together in my shop, but I've got plenty of time. So we are two videos in on that new house series, plus an intro video that tours the house and goes over the whole game plan. There's a link to that playlist at the end of this video. This series has totally re-energized me on woodworking and making videos. There's just an endless amount of content to be made and it's pretty cool that I get to start off with a blank canvas. It's a pretty unique experience. Another cool thing about that house is the garage is going to be my budget-friendly shop with cheaper wood-breaking tools. My main shop has all the big fancy tools. Some of y'all like seeing the big tools and the endless possibilities. And some of you have been telling me to work with more budget-friendly tools. So now I can accommodate both people. And you'll notice that in this video, I was working with a different table saw. I bought a WEN. I actually bought all the WEN woodworking tools, all of them. And my next video that's coming out, I'm reviewing them as a, as a whole. They, they're they like the cheapest, some of the cheapest woodworking tools that you can get, but they appear to be well-made. So I'm gonna put them to the test 
and we'll see which ones are good and which ones are no good. And since I paid for everything, they don't know who I am, it's not sponsored, it'll be, it'll be an honest review. Many of you have probably already judged, you've left, but those of you who are still here, you are my kind of people. If you hold on just a little bit longer, I've got a gift for you. It's been a year of ups and downs. Over the summer, we lost my grandpa Pachuto. He was one month away from being 101 years old. My woodworking grandpa Pachuto, he was woodworking at 100 years old. That's just crazy. I've always said when I grew up, I want to be like Grandpa Pachuto. Grandpa was just a huge inspiration for me. So lots of ups and downs this year. 2024, it's going to get crazy. I am so excited about 2024. I feel like we're making the best videos that we've ever made. If there ever was a year to blow up, I think it's going to be 2024. We got a really good content strategy. We got all the crazy projects at the new house. There's big projects and little projects. And then we got the budget shop over there and then the unlimited shop here. I just, I feel, I'm just super excited about 2024. I think we're on the right path. Over the last 10 years, it's just been a, there hasn't been a blow up year. It's just been a steady, steady ride the whole time. And if we don't blow up next year, well, doesn't matter. But if there ever was a year that we we're gonna blow up, I think it's gonna be 2024 and I'm insanely excited. I still have three more videos planned in December, but I probably won't do a little talky talk. So I just wanted to say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and let's blow up in 2024 together. Not just me, I hope all of you have a great year coming up. Fruitful, profitable, fulfilling, whatever you're looking for in 2024, I hope that you get. Kelly is not mic'd up, so even if she did talk, you wouldn't be able to hear her. But anyways, say hello to Kelly, say happy birthday to Duke, and as always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something. Where's Wally? Wally, come here. Here's something that you might not know. Wally's original name, Wally's actual name is Walnut, named after my favorite wood. But Walnut didn't roll off the tongue like Wally, so we've just been calling him Wally since day two. Huh. All right, you're done. His contract states if he's on camera for more than 30 seconds, he gets if you're still here, use coupon code I made it to the end for $5 off anything in my store. Most project plans are $5, so that means free. That coupon code will expire at the end of the month and it's limited to one per person. Again, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, Happy Holiday, whatever you celebrate. Have a great holiday and the best 2024. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something. Cheers. That's a lot of talking at the end of the video. Not for you. I don't normally do that. If you want to see more of that, more of just the casual conversation, let me know. It's probably not good for the analytics though. I would say, well, I'll look at the graph, but I I'm going to guess most people left as soon as the action stopped. That's, that's what usually happens. But if you stuck around, cheers.